covenant, we can experience it. Praise the Lord. So God does not have problem with faithfulness. And he went forth to establish to us what is faithfulness. To be faithful is to be found trustworthy. A man that is faithful is not a man of what I service. And pastor explained to us again, faithfulness is to be deep loyalty and allegiance to a cause, to a person, organization, or a belief system. So this is what faithfulness means. So it's important that when we talk about that we are faithful, this theory category is important, the theory dimension of faithfulness. Faithfulness to what? A person. Faithfulness to an organization or a vision. Faithfulness to a belief system. It is true that God has called us out of darkness and called us into glory to live a life of glory and dominion. But you, you will discover that many believers are not living in the reality of that calling for us to reign and rule, even in the midst of our enemy. And this is as a result of ignorance. He said, my people are destroyed because of what? Ignorance, lack of knowledge. He didn't say unbelievers, my people. So the greatest problem of every believer is what? Ignorance. For thou shalt know the truth, and the truth you know shall do what? Shall set you free. Sometimes you wonder, why is it that most unbelievers are more successful, even in the secular, than us? In the, in the place of work, why is it that they know the dynamics of service? No wonder the scripture said, he said, the children of this world are more wiser than what? Than the children of light. There are principles we need to understand wherever we find ourselves, whether as in an organization, in a church, where you are working, how to relate with people and your boss in order to enjoy the blessings of God that will help you to reign and to rule in life. Others are enjoying promotion, recommendation, but you are not. It's important that you sit down to examine what am I not doing where? I know there can be wicked bosses. I can know there can be wicked um, system. But it's important that you know you are on the right path. That before you start complaining, first of all, do what? Examine yourself. Because the truth is, if you are doing right and those systems are being played in such organization, a time will come that the Lord that seeth you in the secret, as Pastor told us, will what? We reward you in the open. So this is very, very important. So it's important that we are faithful to a vision, a person, an organization. How faithful are you in where you are serving? Where you are working currently? You can't rule and reign if you are not faithful. Faithfulness is a requirement. It's a requirement. You have to ask yourself, in the place where I am serving right now, how committed I am to the vision. How committed I am to the organization. I was watching um, a program, and then the man, what he does, he goes to different organizations that are having staffs. They are working, but they are not making money, and yet they are paying salary. So he tried to look at the organization and found out where they are not doing well. And when it was time to speak to the CEO, and he told them, he said, most employer doesn't love you. They don't love you and they don't love the job. What they are interested in is what? The salary. So if you as an employee does not rise to stand and ensure things are put in the proper place, he said, most employee will not do the right thing. And it's true. It will take only employees that are faithful, that understand the principle of faithfulness. In the principle of faithfulness, you serve whether man is there or not. You don't serve because of eye service. You serve because this is the right thing and the will of God that needs to be what? To be done. So this is important. And pastor have explained to us deeply in those theory dimensions. But where I want to focus on this morning in this third service on the mystery of faithfulness is that 
your faithfulness will be tested. It is not enough to say, I am faithful. Hmm. You know, if I try to ask now, are you really faithful in your place of work, in your service in church? Yes, we'll hear hands raised up. Yes, I'm faithful. But the truth is that it's not enough to say what? I am faithful. Faithfulness will be what? Tested. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Message translation. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Message translation. He said, each one's work, eventually there is going to be what? An inspection, a test. If you use cheap or inferior material, you will be found out. And the inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You won't get by with a team. In other words, your works or your service as an employee, as a kingdom person, he said it will be tested. And the test will be rigorous. It will be tested with fire. If the material can survive the heat of the fire, then we we'll know that your works, your service is actually faithful. And this is another thing you need to know. Both men and God test for faithfulness. It is not only God that tests for faithfulness. Both men and God, they test for faithfulness. There is a test that is required, a little test to know if the material, the kind of the quality of your service, if they can stand. It's not enough to say I serve. It will be tested. We must understand this. When our service is actually tested, how will you know if it is right or not? How will you know if you can stand the test of your service? Because at the end, there will always be a result of inspection. Quickly, I want to show us about four parameters to test faithfulness. Four parameters to test your faithfulness. Either in an organization, in a church, in the place where you are working. As a CEO, you own a business, people are working with you. These are parameters, some of the parameters we can use to test. Quickly, Luke chapter 16 verse 10. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. May they help us. New King James Version. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. He who is faithful in what is what? Least is faithful also in what? In much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in what? In much. One of the key to test for faithfulness is the key of humility. The key of humility. Hmm. How humble are you in your place of work, in the place of service? How humble are you in the place of your service in the house of God? This is key. There are people they will never do any menial jobs. If you give to them, they'll say, hmm, a homie, how can I stoop so low and you are giving me this kind of work to do? Don't you know who I am? Jesus said, anyone that wants to be great in the kingdom must probably be what? Like a child that do what? That serve. Service is the pathway to greatness in the kingdom. And you can't serve without humility. You can't serve. You can't serve without humility. We live in a generation, people enter, whether secular or religious organization, where they are going for is the throne. If it's the church, it's the mind. They want to enter and become a pastor or a deacon or a deaconess. If it's an organization, they want to start compete with the people they have already met here. 
not knowing the pathway to humble themselves and to what? And to serve. God knew if he sent Joseph as a well-structured man, a consultant, and said, Pharaoh, I have the solution to your work. They will reject him. He broke the staff of bread in Egypt and sent Joseph ahead, a man whose feet the heart is fetters. Through slavery, he entered, not knowing that he have packaged a heavy solution to their problem in a disguised manner. Please, be humble. It is one of the tests that can give you access with the great. It is the master key to assess greatness. When you are proud, doors will be closed against you. Doors will be closed against you. Doors will be closed against you. Please, pastor says something. There are people watching. There are things they discuss behind your scene. Both the great and the top. And they can look and say, this guy, we send some level, of, we know what we'll do. We'll give him a mini or something to do. And you will see many, they will fail. I've seen people, they will come, they say, well, I want to be a pastor. I want to serve. I want, but we'll just give him a small test. They will just fail. They will fail. Humility is the key. They can't do any mini thing. There is no mini job I can't do. When you serve and grow in the kingdom, when you serve, you didn't jump from up. You know, there are some believers, they jump from up from wherever they are. So when you are the one that served, Pastor was explaining, how did he go to the place where he is today? By serving in the kingdom. You will grow. You will grow. So humility is the key. And how do you know people who are not humble? Test them with little things. They will react. They own me. He that is faithful will the least. You see, I, I'm supposed to be taking an announcement. I'm supposed to be the one to be traveling abroad for the trip for the organization. Why did they not enlist me? And you will see they will react. And what God has been planning for them behind the scene by that reaction, ah, the boss will just look and say, oh, no, 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 no. This one is on feet. They will mark you. Please. Is these are things some unbelievers understood. And that's why they are doing well more than us. And we are saying we want to reign even in the midst of our enemy. Understand these dynamics. Number two parameter. The test of commitment. The test of what? Commitment. The test of commitment. Before I go to the test of commitment in humility, how do you behave to people? How do you speak to people? Your attitude speak louder than voice. How do you speak to your boss? Your disposition. The Bible says Jesus, he opened not his mouth. They led him about like a sheep to the slaughter. And yet he was the creator. The creature. Abusing and humiliating the creator. And yet, he opened up not his mouth. Why? Because there was something he was looking for. For the throne that was, the, for the crown that was set before him. He humbled himself. He despised every form of shame. He despised every form of ridicule. And the Bible said at the end, a name was given to him that is above every other name. At the mention of the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue we confess. There is a way you must not speak or behave to, with the great. There is a way they read both words and not verbal communication. You may think they don't know, they don't, they don't watch, they are watching. Please, it's important for us to be careful. Number two, commitment. Commitment. The test of commitment. Luke chapter 16, verse 12. Luke 16, verse 12. If you have not been faithful in what is another's man, who will give you what is your own? This is the principles of life. 
if you have not been faithful in taking care of another man's work, God can give you your own. It is the faithfulness in taking care of that which is another that certifies you that when your own is given to you, you will take care of it. It's the principle of life. But many people don't understand. They want to jump. And they want to have their own. When they have not learned the arts of killing the bear, they want to kill Goliath. They have not learned the arts of killing the lion. They want to confront Goliath. Goliath will smoke you. He will smoke you. You need to learn in the place of serving and learning committed faithfulness. You build capacity. You learn and unlearn and relearn again. You will make mistakes and, and, and get correction. You know 101 ways it will not work. You will know 101 ways it will work so that when you now arrive in yours, you will gain supernatural speed. I pray the Lord grant you understanding in the precious name of Jesus. But we are in a generation where people don't want to serve. They don't want to serve. They just want to nose dive and arrive. This is so important. This is so important. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into what? Ministry. He counted him to be faithful first before what? Giving him and putting him in ministry. So faithfulness and commitment is important. Number three parameters. Test of loyalty. Test of loyalty. Remember what we are talking about? Being committed, faithful to what? A person or a vision organization and what? A belief system. It's important. The test of loyalty. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. Joshua 1 verse 1 to 5. Media, please. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is what? Dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to what? To them, the children of what? Of Israel. Every place that the sword of your feet will tread upon, I have what? Given you. As I said to Moses, verse 4, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river and the river of, of Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to do what? To stand before you. Your enemies will not be able to stand. You will rule above them all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will also be with you. And I will not leave you, nor what? Nor forsake you. What end Joseph this Powerful prophecy because he was loyal to what? To his master, Moses. It's important that we are committed to the place where God has placed us, being committed and loyal to the vision and to the person that God has caused, caused us to, to follow. This is so important. The test of loyalty cannot be debated. One of the things that even God and man can't take is disloyalty. True or false? What causes the war in heaven? Disloyalty. Satan said, I will not ascend. And sit in the seat of God. It was God couldn't take it. And the Bible said there was war in heaven. Anywhere there is disloyalty, there will be war. It's a contention. Two kings can't be on the same boat. So that is why people lose out of favor. Have you ever read how the Bible described Lucifer? Not Satan, not Lucifer. 
you will wonder. He was the bright and the morning star. By that disloyalty, he disconnects himself from all of the blessing, the grandeur that God created in him. When you press his chest, he will bring a sound. If he press his leg, it's another sound of music. Every part of his body was made of sounds. Please, it's important. Give me Luke chapter 12, verse 45. Luke chapter 12, verse 45 to 47. Look at a, dis, a disloyal servant. Their master left and they gave them work to do. It's like if somebody, a master traveled to Lagos or outside of the country and employees and the master gave them work to do. But look at what happened. But if the servant said in his heart, the servant said in his heart, our master is delaying coming home. And what happened? He began to beat the male and what? The females, all other junior staff, he was maltreating them. And what happened? And to eat and to drink and to be what? Drunk. The resources of the organization, he starts squandering them. <laughs> Man that is not loyal. He said, the master is gone. The master of the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him. And at an hour where he is not aware. And we cut him into two. He will break him into pieces. Into two pieces. And appoint him his portion with what? With the wicked, with the unbelievers. This is how many people lose favor. And they will say it's Satan. We need to understand this if we must take charge in the secular and even in the kingdom. How are you faithful, loyal with the resources of human and finances and material given to you? Given to you how? It's very important. The next one, the fourth test of, of um, faithfulness is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Are we there? Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, See, we have left all and do what? And follow you. We have left all and follow you continually. So Jesus answered and said, As surely I said unto you, there is no one who have left houses or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospel's sake. Continue. Who shall not receive a hundredfold? Not in this time, houses, brothers, sisters, mother, children and land with persecution and in the age to come, what happened? Eternal life. You can't sacrifice for the kingdom and not be blessed. It's important. It is men who have paid the price of sacrifice. He said, this has stayed with me for long. That the king will be looking for to honor. The king will be looking for to honor. He said, you have been faithful with the little things. None, I will give you power to reign over the capitalists. That is ten cities. You will not rule over many things. Why? Because you have sacrificed greatly. Your boss are looking. Other staff are. Don't think people are not looking at you. They may assume or behave they are not looking, but they are looking. I've been privileged to stand in the board of directors and then they'll be discussing people's matter. That is when you will know that people are watching. Even your enemies, they know you are good. They know. So it's important. Sacrifice is key. So learn to sacrifice. Go the extra mile. Don't just stop where everyone stops. Always try to put the extra to ensure the place where you are, you are working, the church where you are serving, things go well. Quickly as I close, benefits of faithfulness. I will rush this. Benefit of faithfulness. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 8. NIV. There are benefits we enjoy in living a life of faithfulness. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 8. For he guards the cause of the just. 
and protect the ways of the faithful ones. Hmm. God is not a liar. Can you for once just take God for it by his word? Say, God, you said you will guide the course and protect the ways of the faithful. I choose to be faithful. Guide my course. Protect me. You won't die on timely death. <laughs> so, even though they concord it from the village, but because that seed you have sown, there will be a vash. For he guides the course of the just and protects the ways of the faithful. And number one, divine guidance and protection. Faithful men and women enjoy divine guidance and what? Protection. Divine guidance and protection. Number two, Matthew chapter 25, verse 19 to 21. Matthew 25. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled account with them. Continue. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Other five. Master said, you, entrust, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained what? Five more. Continue. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of how many things? Many things. You enjoy promotion. Also take down Matthew chapter 25 verse 23. When you are faithful, you enjoy promotion. You enjoy supernatural promotion. Look, even when your boss is wicked and you are faithful, they play policies or whatever you call it in your place of organization. And you are served to that point. Faithfully serving. God will orchestrate events and circumstances. Your due promotion must come. Either if you can't effect it inside the organization, it will carefully, systematically pull you out and position you and send you to a place to enjoy your reward. God does not use men. He called men to bless them. Please, don't say because you are serving under a bad boss. Bad people and say you want to change and to be unfaithful. No, you are just changing yourself. Number three, in the place where we read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12 to 19, the Bible says it was men that recommended what? David. Recommendation. They say we have found the son of Jesse. The one that can play well because they have seen him before. Faithfully playing. Recommendation. Who is recommending you? Can you recommend you? <laughs> can someone recommend? There are people that have worked with you. Either fashion designer or whatever. You can recommend them. True of us. And yet they are there looking for a job. And you know there are opportunities. Why? Because of lack of faithfulness. They have soiled your name and your reputation. And you have vowed. I can't recommend them. Why? They have broken that part of faithfulness. Quickly, the next one. John chapter 12, 24 to 26 is Honor. Honor is one of the key that God used to decorate men and women that are faithful. And the last one. Let's open Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20. 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 A faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. A faithful person will be richly blessed. But one that is eager to get rich must be punished. Faithfulness guarantees the blessings of the Lord. What is the blessing? An empowerment to succeed. The blessing is an empowerment to succeed. That anything you place your hand to do in your studies, you succeed. In your business, you succeed. Whatever you place your is an empowerment to succeed. That's what the blessing is. So this is the pathway in order to enjoy the blessing. This is the pathway to rule and reign in life over your enemies. And I want us to take this to heart 
to begin to practicalize it. The teaching, the message from the first service to today is a very practical teaching. And I want us to try to implement them even in the place where you are working. And you see God lifting you higher, raising you higher above your enemies. We will begin to soar and to reign in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I want us to bow down our head this morning and begin to pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me to live a faithful life. Help me. If the master comes to test me, will he really find me faithful? Will he find me faithful? Will he find me being committed? He said, he that is a faithful servant is the one that his master will found. Doing that which a master has done. Say, Lord, help me. How am I committed to the vision of this church? How am I committed to the pastors? How am I committed to our boss, to my boss, a place of work? What am I contributing? What am I putting to the table? Am I paying or a blessing again to my boss? How have I been able to sharpen my skills? When the doors of opportunity comes to me, will I really be able to fit in? Lord, help me. Ask for grace and accept responsibility and say, Lord, help me. The hand of the Lord is not short that he cannot reach you. It's not sure that he cannot bless you. But he said, when your words are tested, will he stand the test? When all these parameters are being infused to test your service, your work, will you stand for promotion? Will he stand you out to be promoted? Will he stand you out to be blessed? Will he stand you out to be honored? Will, you, will he stand you out to enjoy the guidance and the protection of God? Oh, Shavako Savina. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I receive grace. Somebody cry for grace this morning. Zandeski Valianda Balade Sofela Kabi. Lord, by my strength, I cannot do it. Lord, help me. Help me. Make sure you are crying. Cry for grace. Cry for the help of God. If possible, repent. In any area you may have wronged. Cry to God. Lord, this morning, Give me a change of heart. Give me a change of heart, oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. For that powerful word and timely message, can we give Jesus a big hand of praise? <laughs> Minister Moses. We celebrate you. Thank you very much for that powerful. Someone celebrate God once more time. <laughs> Amen. Is that session of the service where we give in honor to God our tithes and our offerings. So please, if you are a tithe in the house, just make your way forward. Our brethren in the overflow, you are not left out. You can walk in front of your screen. Quickly, let's look at the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 12, from verse 5 to 7. But you are to seek the place the Lord your God will choose from among all the tribes to put his name there for his dwelling. To that place you must go. There, bring your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and special gifts, what you have vowed to give, and your freewill offerings and the firstborn of your heads and flocks. There in the presence of the Lord your God, you and your families shall eat and shall rejoice in everything you have put your hand to.
because the Lord God has blessed you. Someone say loud amen. Please, can we have the declaration on the screen? All right, Titus, please repeat after me as loud as you can. Say, Father, I present my thoughts to you as a faithful steward of all financial and material resources you have blessed me with and entrusted into my hands. Father, by this act of obedience and honor to your words, pour out your overflowing blessings upon the works of my hands. Protect my family and businesses from the oppressions of devourers and give us an enduring reputation of the blessed in the name of Jesus. Say amen. Please cast your tithes as you return back to your seat. Quickly, everyone, package your offering and rise to your feet with me. Package your offering honorably. Rise to your feet and just lift it up and say a word of prayer. That this hand will never lack in the name of Jesus. I will continually be a supporter of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Please cast your offerings as we receive our MG. Hallelujah. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Let's listen to the following announcements. Our services at the Voltage Church holds every Sunday by 7 a.m. for the first service, 8.30 a.m. for the second service, and 10 a.m. for the third service, respectively. During the week, we have our Difference Connect Group Fellowship from Wednesday to Saturday by 5 p.m. here in this auditorium. Newness and Save Evan Odsdias on Wednesdays by 5 p.m. Gatekeepers Thursday 5 p.m. Flourish and Abundance Friday by 5 p.m. Koinonia and Light on Saturday by 5 p.m. Ubo Campus on Friday by 5 p.m. And Ekeon Campus on Saturday by 5 p.m. You can get today's sermon on our Telegram channel as well as other sermons on Telegram channel link on, on other of, of our sermons. Our Telegram channel link is being displayed on the screen. All services are available for download for free. Voltage bus services for Ubo and Ekewan campus is available at Uniben Small Gate and front of guest hostel for a camera by 7.45 a.m. every Sunday. Growth tract registration is still ongoing, and the link for registration is displayed on the screen. For more inquiries, kindly meet with Minister Moses. Hallelujah. The Voltage Church presents Singles Hangout. Let's celebrate, church. The Singles Hangout is an evening of refreshment and entertainment, and it holds on the 12th of June, which is tomorrow. Time for the red carpet is 1 p.m., and the main event starts by 2 p.m., so please let's take note. And it is sponsored by We Are More Ladies and CTG Brothers. Let's appreciate them, church. 
Evangelism holds every first and third Saturday by 8 a.m. Worship matters with Minister Vincent Olds this next Sunday on the 18th of June, 2023, and the time is 4 p.m. Please, let's make it a date to fellowship with Abba. We are more ladies' conference. We are more ladies' conference holds on the 24th of June, and the team is the Avers. The team is the Avers, and the venue is Indoor Sport Complex Uniben. So, to this effect, Refresh won't be holding this month. All married and singles are encouraged to be part of this meeting. To order your T-shirt, you can meet Grace. A number is being projected on the screen, and it's sold for 4,000 Naira. Also, do it to follow us on all, on all our social media platform. Do it to follow us on The Voltage on Facebook. We are The Voltage on Instagram, and we are The Voltage on Twitter. Thanks, and God bless you. So welcome, Mrs. Radiance, the representative for We Are More, the representative for um, Two in One Fellowship. Give us their presentation. Happy regards, happy people. How we tired? If we are tired, can I get some happy sound in the building? Yes, we got to be happy. We have no choice but to be happy because good things, good development keep encroaching around us and we got to be part of this. It is another great one that has been suddenly orchestrated by the Willows and this is about a week trip to Ghana. Can I get some shout in the house? All right, so right away, the Willows has been able to put in place an interesting and insightful trip that will help us explore the beauty of Africa in the most perfect way. And this very trip will cost out 250,000 Naira only for singles, 450,000 Naira only for the married ones. You will testify or agree with me that there is no way you can go to Ghana, accommodation served, service centers already available with this very price, especially with the rate of inflation currently. So the Willows has made it very possible and affordable for us to patronize this. Most times as Christians, we walk around the clock, forgetting that we are not working for our nest of king. We're working for our own self-comfort. And in a bid to define this self-comfort, you have to take some time to rest. You have to take some time off work, as this is remedial for your body, soul, and spirit. So while we do that, we expect some features in this very program. Please, media, help me out. Okay, so we'll be taking a road trip to Ghana. For those who are interested in the hair trip, you can make special reservations for that. Don't forget to see Mr. Nancy Nakogo after church service to help out with that. Also, for those who will be following us on the road trip, we'll be observing border protocols. And we'll stay in Ghana for five nights, accommodation inclusive in the course. Next slide, please. All right, so in the course of our stay, we experience bonfire night where we're going to chant, we're going to dance around the fire and have some merry time. Also, for those who are lovers of sports, football game will be available, volleyball and golf course. Apart from that, there will be breakout sessions for the couples and the singles. A talent show is not left out too. Our craft food exhibition will be so much on board. We're going to taste palatable dishes of Ghana. And uh, then we could be able to resolve the argument between Nigerian jollof and Ghana jollof. Also, we're going to meet and greet with special people, have a boat ride, including dinner night. Yeah, while we're still there, we'll tour the city of Accra. And we'll visit the Mankula market for any apparel we want to see or we want to buy. Also, we'll visit the Independence Square in Ghana. Yes, the Boti waterfall is not left out. It's uh, a vegetation that is enclosed with rainforest, and uh, it's going to be very soothing for the soul. All right, so while we do this, there are some requirements that you will be expected to meet. If you do not have an international passport, no worries. You know what we say, Akuna Matata. You can always, you know, 
have your government issued passport or your driver's license, PVC, or NIN, that would do. But if you have your passport, and uh, let's assume you want to boost your travel profile, this is the best opportunity for you to do that. Because while we take this trip, we will be accessible to three international stamps on our passport. So that is already a boost for you to have a rich travel profile or history. Apart from that, um, for those mothers who will be interested in this very course, feel free to keep your kids with grandma or trusted relatives. So we could have fun together with our distractions. And don't forget that this very event is planned by Travel Around. Feel free to meet Mr. Nes Nakogo for more information. Thank you so well. Hallelujah. So before we bring the service to a close, there are some very important persons in our midst and we'd like to welcome you and to know you. So if there are any first timers in the house this morning and also in the overflow because you are a part of this service, first timers in this auditorium and first timers in the overflow, can you please signify and be upstanding? Please let's be on our feet, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Some gentlemen, you're welcome to a re-roll and relevant church called The Voltage, which is an acronym for the voice of this age. We love and we accept you just the way you are, but we love you just too much to let you remain that way. So please come and grow with us as we see God's way and show his love. Our services here at The Voltage is 7 a.m. for the first service. 8.30 a.m. for the second service and 10 a.m. for the third service. We also hold an online weekly prayer called Every Night with Jesus on Mixed R app from 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Trust me, you do not want to miss out on any of these amazing services as they are filled with so much creativity and excellence mixed with vibrant worship and real practical teachings from God's word. Our lead pastors are Reverend Oyes and Pastor Awini O.J. Kerry. It is our utmost pleasure to welcome you to this great house where God is set to make you a voice. Thank you so much for coming. For the first time in the overflow, we love you. Thank you for coming. There's a beautiful lady standing at the entrance of the church. Can you please take your bag, your writing materials, on, and all you came to church with and move to the exit the church? Please Celebrate them as they go out. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them, church. Is can you go to the exit of the celebrate them, church? Celebrate them. Keep celebrating them even as they go. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. Praise the Lord. I will be blessed in the service of today. Praise the Lord. Shall we please be upstanding as we appreciate God? Thank him for the message we have received both in the first, second, and third service. Just thank him, bless him. Father, we thank you. Bless be God forever. In Jesus' precious name we pray. So just to reiterate, tomorrow is a special program for all our singles. It will be a special singles hangout. And the time, and the time again is um, 2 p.m. So tomorrow is public holiday. We encourage all singles in the house to so please 
let's be here. It will be a time for comedy, for music, talk show, and spoken word. And our pastors will be here live also to talk to us. So we encourage every single to please to be around. And in, ensure you invite one or two singles to also be a part of what God is doing here at the Voltage. So, um, to this in fact, the soft copies of the flowers, we put it on our group, on WhatsApp group, and all other platforms. Please ensure you share the flyers and also put it on your status to invite someone to be around tomorrow. Because tomorrow is public holiday. People will be looking for where to just hang out. It will be a nice time for us to be here in the presence of God. If you are a member of Voltage or you have been coming or you just, today is your first day, you want to be a part of the vote church, you want to be a part of the workforce, please, at the close of service, we'll project um, the registration link for Go Track. Just scan the code or you can type the link and register and we'll get back to you. The Lord we should bless you in Jesus' name. Look at someone standing to you and hold the person by your hand, his or hand, and look to the person about to eye, but we are going to prophesy to that person. Look at that person. Ask the person, are you faithful? What is the person saying? He's saying yes. Ask him, like him or her again. If your faithfulness is tested, will you stand the test of time? Look at that person and prophesy and say, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, forever and ever, and ever and ever, and ever and ever and ever and ever. What is your neighbor saying? Bless you. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.